This week on Dine Drink Clea, the podcast. It would be great if you get there and maybe you don't know the exact kitchenware, the exact thing you're looking for, but you have somebody who's basically an expert who can talk you through step one, two, and three to get exactly what you need. And it sounds like that's it's a good point yeah. because a lot of the initial inventory is going to be from Jeremy and Yeah, Emily. Cousin Maine's Lobster food truck, which kind of got popular on Shark Tank. They're going to be moving into the Cleveland area. I know they have trucks in Columbus and Cincinnati. I'm pretty sure they have about 60 or more trucks across the U.S. For being honest, they pretty much taste the same. Any flavor differences are nominal. You can be a dick about it and talk about how refined your palate is if you want. He just then called us out. <laughs> I'm Josh Duke. And I'm Alex Darris. And you're either watching or listening to Dine, Drink, Clea, the podcast where each and every week we're going to be joined by Cleveland.com's best and brightest food experts, insiders, and influencers to talk all things food and drink here in the Cleveland scene. What are we talking about today, Alex? Yeah, we had a lot going on on the podcast today. We're going to be talking about Larder, um, Ohio City gem of a deli. They're expanding into a little bit of still food related, but new business. Uh, we're going to talk about food trucks now that the weather's getting nice. It's food truck season. It's time to eat outside. We're going to talk about some new ones, some old ones. And then we're also going to get into the great Cleveland ballpark mustard debate. Oh, gosh. Very very dramatic stuff. So yeah, first we're joined by Mark Bona. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Hey, guys. Yeah, and so Larder, lots of new exciting stuff going on in Ohio City. Tell us, tell us about it. Yeah, Larder has just been uh, an amazing place in Ohio City. They've been established more than a minute now. Uh, Jeremy Yamansky and his wife, Allie Lavelle, have done a wonderful job. It's both a shop and a place to get a bite. It's, it's really neat. And their latest news is they've announced that they're going to be expanding in into the former beet jar juice bar and <laughs> takeaway. I think that's the, the, yeah. whole, the whole name. I just call it the beat jar, but right. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and our colleague Paris Wolf had a neat story about it recently. And it, it, this is neat because it's not a restaurant. It's not an eatery. It's going to be a store. It's going to have really gently used uh, cookware, a lot of serving ware, bowls, utensils, but also some, some food like spices, seasonings, uh, imported olive oil. Well, I like Jeremy calls it uh, pantry products. Yeah, uh, He's trying to make this more inclusive because there are stores that specialize in this right now. Sur La Table and Williams-Sonoma, really great stores, but they're a little high end. They're pretty expensive. He's trying to come up with something that kind of reaches out for people with all different money levels, wallet levels, yeah. basically. And I think I think that's pretty good. I like the fact that he calls this, his his take on it is, he's looking at it as kind of a, a Main Street hardware store. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, and, and it's kind of interesting because it seems like, I don't know, naturally people might expect Jeremy and Allie, James Beard Award, win, or semifinalists for the James Beard Award, that they would open another restaurant what 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 about this hardware thing like it's you say it's a hardware store why do you think that they are kind of going this direction with their next business endeavor i think jeremy in particular is very he's very diverse he's got a lot of interest and a lot of things going on uh you know i think what multiple times nominated for beard uh <clears throat> james beard award he's done a wonderful job the couple has done a wonderful job there he's into a lot of different things he wrote a he co-authored a book on called code Mm -hmm. which was just fascinating. If you're a real foodie and you're, I mean, you're a true cook, you will really geek out on this. He's an expert at, of all things mushrooms, specifically the molds that lead to uh, the umami flavors we get in, in uh, soy sauce and miso and things like that. So I think he's got a lot of different things going on rattling around in his, in his head. And he was saying, I don't think we, if you're a chef, that doesn't mean you need to be pigeonholed as just someone who cooks. There are our other interests. I think he's hit upon something that's very important because you just don't see this. Mm -hmm. You know, the only time I can think of anything happening like this in Northeast Ohio is the Les Dames des Escoffiers uh, mm -hmm. has a culinary treasure sale once a year. That's a great thing and it raises money for a great cause, but that's a, a one-shot pop type of thing. Jeremy's going to do this. I think it's going to be more consistent. Yeah, and kind of going off the miso and soy sauce, um, like those fermented products, it sounds like from Paris's story, he plans on incorporating some of that um, into the locally made like misos and stuff into the product line at the new store. So it sounds exciting. Yeah, super exciting. Um, one thing that just strikes me is 
if I'm going to get used kitchenware from somewhere, it might as well be from a chef of that <laughs> Of that degree, right? Well, well yeah, and, and exactly. I think that's part of it too. It's mm -hmm. it's about the products and the customer service you get yeah, there. And I was gonna say, um, it would be great if you get there and maybe you don't know the exact kitchenware, the exact thing you're looking for, but you have somebody who's basically an expert who can talk you through step one, two, and three to get exactly what you need. And it sounds like that's it's going to provide- That's a good point yeah. because a lot of the initial inventory is going to be from Jeremy and yeah. Emily. So well, and people who actually have used it, it's like, I don't know, I'm sure the Sir Latab and the um, William Sonoma, is those, they're great. They, they have a lot of expertise, but it's not like they're professional chefs who are working mm -hmm. there and selling the items that they actually use in the kitchen every day. So, yeah. Yeah, so are these items coming from their rest from their restaurant or is it is it something that's going to source out? I think initially, area? I think a little bit of um, kind of the repurpose, but mm -hmm. then it's going to expand a little bit. That's I think exactly right. they'll probably know, too. I think it's like I said, the customer service thing seems to be as big of a part as the product line that they're yeah. offering. So I feel like once they get to know their clientele and what they're buying and stuff, that'll probably affect what they stock too. Yeah. And I got to imagine this is going to create a uh, foster sort of a community around the area um, because, you know, I feel like cookers like to stay together and give each other tips and advice. I'm not a cooker. So obviously a cooker. I, yeah, a cooker. A co a He's cooker. clearly not a chef. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a <laughs> chef. But yeah, people who, who like to cook and stuff, I you guys like to share yeah so i yeah. feel like this is gonna it's be like, a good hub for you yeah, guys well yeah and it's going to be across from the larder it's on west 29th which is already kind of it's becoming a little foodie hub area mm -hmm. i feel like especially a, a huge credit of that is to jeremy and Elliot larder kind of setting up shop there and everything but it's like yeah you can go get a larder sandwich and then go shopping for kitchenware after right across the street yeah the that's an interesting point because there are a lot of local businesses run by locally local people and it's all about food and drink and graham vesey and his wife who, uh you know he graham and his business partner run man can wine they own the building that uh, Jeremy and Allie are going into. Yeah. And it's, and they just, you're right. I mean, the, the foodies know each other, but so do the business people mm -hmm. too. And I think that's a good thing. And I think they, they support each other. Well, and I mean, I've written several stories I know about newer restaurants who, who now have um, like Abundance Culinary, who I talk about all the time. It's a great, on the, in Cleveland Heights, one of the best Chinese food restaurants, but they got started because Jeremy was like, yeah, do a pop up in Larder on Monday. We're closed. Just, yeah, you can use our kitchen. And I think they have, especially Jeremy and Allie, have that big community helping lifting other people up, getting getting other people involved and, and kind of building that network of chefs in the area to show like, I don't know, it helps, it strengthens the numbers pretty much, so. And now we're joined by Pete Chikarian, who's going to talk to us about food trucks. It's the weather's warming up, it's food truck season. So how are you doing, Pete? Good, how are you, friends? Good. Um. Are you? Do you have any passionate feelings about food trucks? Oh, I love food trucks. I mean, I can't get enough of them. And uh, quite honestly, I've been looking forward to food truck season pretty much since the last one ended. Yeah, I know. Um, recently, uh, one of the reasons we thought of this topic was because Cousin Maine's Lobster food truck, which kind of got popular on Shark Tank, they're going to be moving oh, into the Cleveland area. I know they have trucks in Columbus and Cincinnati. I'm pretty sure they have about sixty or more trucks across the U.S. But yeah, lobster rolls, lobster lobster quesadillas, lobster tater tots. Yeah, so. they're, they're definitely speaking my language. I got to tell you, the reaction to us sharing their update that they're coming to Cleveland full time was crazy. Everyone is super stoked. Um, can't wait to try it personally. Uh, yeah, I just really cannot wait to dig into that. And it looks the thing really about, good. <laughs> yeah, and the thing about it is you're going to have to track them. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. right now you have to kind of follow their Facebook page, I believe, is, yeah. is where they're posting their updates on where they're going to be and when. They've already started coming to the Northeast Ohio area. They could come to a little bit more closer areas to me. Yeah, I know they've been in Geneva a lot out at the wineries and stuff out there. But I think now that was like their test run a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, it seems like now they're going to be a lot more local all over Northeast Ohio yeah. at the breweries, distilleries, wineries, festivals, stuff like that. Yeah. And speaking of festivals, I recently uh, went to Bright Winter. And oh, yeah. They had a few food trucks there. A lot of the ones you regularly see. And one that sort of stood out to me uh, as being like the, the longest line there was a Swenson's truck. Mm -hmm. But yeah, believe it or not, Swenson's, they had a food truck there and it was like 
packed. It was there was a line for that for old reliable a of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I I thought that just stuck out, stood out to me as something that was pretty interesting that that would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I live in Lakewood, which we have the Lakewood Truck Park, which is a good mm-hmm. way to to experience a lot of the trucks. One that I really enjoy is par. Par- Parlia, um, which is a Filipino food truck. I think they actually recently moved into a brick and mortar in Olmsted Falls, mm. but they have really good like like ske- meat skewers and noodles, and they have ube cookies, and it's delicious. They are wonderful. It's actually. so good. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. The Filipino food that they roll out over there is just awesome. Mm-hmm. I actually experienced them there at the food truck park too, which is a really neat place. I'm a West Sider. Um, and, uh, that's where I encountered a couple of other great places. One of them, uh, Betty's bomb ass burgers, which are oh, absolutely, I was awesome. on my list too. <laughs> I was a little disappointed that they didn't make it into the running for the, uh, the reader's poll for the burgers that are, mm. uh, you know, we're kind of digging into now, but the other one that I really love is uh smoke this barbecue. The oh yeah. Pit barbecue. They're really awesome. Uh, definitely want more of that. Yeah, speaking of uh, food truck parks, you know, one cool thing that Cleveland or downtown Cleveland Alliance has going on pretty much every spring, summer from May to September is Walnut Wednesdays yep. down in, what is the area called? Uh, Pete, what, the plaza, do you know the name? It's I, I think it's Walnut, or it's like oh, yeah, Walnut yeah, yeah. Street or exactly. whatever. It's on um, Walnut Street. That's why they but call it that. Yeah, there's a name for the plaza, but anyway. I don't know. Our old office used to be by it, so we used to be able to walk there for lunch yeah which yeah. was and nice so there's just a hub of food trucks going to be there around oh. lunchtime every wednesday i believe they also might have a food truck tuesdays on public square there's a bunch of them yeah. i know they all go to crocker park i think one day like they're everywhere um but yeah it, it feels like in the summer it's you could eat at a food truck every single day of the week if you yep. wanted, for sure. Another one I wanted to shout out is um, Squash the Beef, which is a mm. soul food food truck. But you wouldn't. It's one of those places that, if unless someone told you, you wouldn't even really know it's all vegan. But it's all mm. vegan soul food. It's delicious. Mm, I have to put that on my list. The one that I'm excited for that's coming up too uh, runs right along Euclid Avenue. It's the Cleveland State University food truck. They have one called the Long Ship, and it's basically this gigantic truck. It's like almost double size of what you would consider a normal food truck to be. And they have the best Polish boys Ooh, I've ever yeah. had. They are super. Um, You're so going to have to try that, Josh. Those, sure. those Polish boys are like twice the size of a normal Polish boy too, like in keeping with the length of this food truck. So they are massive. <laughs> big you, you need a nap afterwards. Boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds delicious. Yeah. No, some of the food trucks are crazy. I know there's one. It, the name is, I know it's like Fire fire truck or firehouse something but they they have the pizza oven Mm -hmm. in the truck you know i've had that yeah yeah like they get really creative with it i mean even the um what's the i don't know i i never get sick of seeing the east coast custard truck either Mm. ever it's always i will always stop right i will always stop yeah there's there's a few that just appear at every single festival and i you just if the festival's not really the festival without whatever that brand of food truck is yeah no and i know like a f- several years ago i did a list for cleveland.com of food trucks and i know there were like over 80 or something i'm it's probably outdated now and we mm-hmm. should probably do an updated one <laughs> but um there are a ton like you if you wanted to try them all there's no way you could probably do it in one season Probably not. Unless you were really a professional eater like us. <laughs> oh, man. And the Kona shaved ice truck, too. I just thought of that. Oh. Yeah. Like, it just isn't summer without a couple of those. No, I remember. They used to come down to <laughs> OU, the Kona shaved ice truck. And it was like the last couple of weeks before the end of the year. And it was like, summer is coming. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess now we all can agree about food trucks. Something we might disagree on is stadium mustard or oh, ballpark yeah mustard oh yes yes so. the great debate it rages on yeah, and no. uh, there's going to be a big uh sort of to do about that at music box supper club coming up uh, a couple of sports writers and uh various historians sort of going to bandy that idea about you know which one is the true uh stadium mustard you have bertman's ballpark mustard mm-hmm. which uh you can get at uh, progressive field but then there's stadium mustard which you can get at, well, yeah, first I mean, energy. Can't call, it, can't call it first energy anymore, though. I'm like <laughs> oh. stuck now because I the Cleveland Browns, yeah, oh, yeah. Cleveland Browns Stadium. Mm-hmm. 
every venue has like a different name every two years. I can't keep up with it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I still call it the Q or Gundarina. <laughs> you know, um, we've been tracking this debate here for a while at Cleveland.com, far before I think any of us had anything to do with the company. And there was just this really funny video that I dug up from 2020 where we worked with uh, Brian Kenny, a local comedian, who kind of just I feel like he puts the debate, the issue, the topic in just the most perfect words. And so I'm just going to share that here real quick, if that's okay. Do it. <laughs> Let's listen. We have our own mustard. That's awesome. I think that's great. We have a mustard that is original and unique to here. And I think that it should be a greater source of pride for the city of Cleveland. We have two of them, actually. We have Burtman Original Ballpark Mustard as well as the inferior rip-off stadium mustard. <laughs> if we're being honest, they pretty much taste the same. Any flavor differences are nominal. You can be a dick about it and talk about how refined your palate is if you want. He just called this out. The same <laughs> product. Look at the ingredients. Burtman's is distilled vinegar, number one mustard seed, salt, sugar, spices. That's it. Stadium mustard is vinegar, number one mustard seed, salt, and red pepper. You have to pick one though. You can't just go, oh, I like them both. No, <laughs> there is no fence sitting in the great Balloon Town USA Mustard Wars. You gotta pick one. He's not wrong. He's not wrong He's at not all. He's not wrong. That's what uh, comedian Brian Kenny has to say about the issue. Well, because the history of it, it does kind of seem like the stadium guy was working with the Burtman guy and then they had a a tiff of some sort, and then he went and made his own business. Isn't but it funny, it's it's just like Cleveland too to have like we have two Christmas ale, mm -hmm. conflicting Christmas ale stories too for when it gets cold. So yeah, sure, why not? So what side of the issue do each of you fall on? <laughs> Neither I'm, one of us want to go first. <laughs> no, I, I will. I will. It's Bertman all the way. Yeah, Bertman's Bertman's is the is the firebrand. Everything else is secondary. I will say. Uh oh. No, I Here do think Stadium Mustard is a little spicier and Burtman's is a little sweeter. And I'm just someone who likes a zesty, punchy mustard. Mm -hmm. But for like, um, but for the sake of being a born and bred Clevelander, I'll say it's Burtman's. It's better. Okay. Well, I do like the um, the stadium one more, uh, but I don't sh I don't particularly feel strongly about it. I kind of agree with them a little bit. It's like it's kind of hard for me to to tell the difference honestly that much. But yeah, that's where I. I mean, my on. opinion is that it's any stadium mustard, but and now I don't even know what to call it. Ballpark mustard, <laughs> like uh, yeah. the the brown mustard mm -hmm. that you eat on a hot dog, is the superior condiment in general. Like. Don't put ketchup on it. Don't put regular mustard on Ooh. it. I hate when I go somewhere like and I get a hot dog and it's not an option. Like at least here at all the stadiums, you have some option for a brown mustard. It's true. But and uh, that's what I want on mine. Yeah. Don't give me anything else. I'd like barbecue sauce. I know that may be a little <laughs> know, bit controversial, <laughs> but I think that the, we it's can odd. have that option that's a little odd. bit more. It's not though, because I mean that's one step away from being a Polish boy. I don't yeah. see I I see no issue with that. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. I feel like in general, people, they do get very passionate about this mustard issue. I feel like we all need to do like a blind taste test or something yeah. to really prove it. Because I think, too, with all the lore and the stories of it, it, it helps. It affects which one you like more. I think I do think so too. Um, around Christmas time, I usually get a six pack of each of the Christmas ales that have a story that sort of blends together much the same way that these two mustards do. I think people should go out and get one of each and conduct their own taste test, make yeah. a little mm -hmm. game out of it. Why not? You know. Yeah. Well, you know that the Burtman people have to be so mad because isn't the stadium mustard in like a hundred and fifty? It's I know it's more. Um, national i think i think it's last i saw it was in like 150 stadiums including first energy or the cleveland brown stadium and a lot of other states but burtman's is more in cleveland that's right nickelback is a bigger band than a lot of other bands i can think of too <laughs> doesn't necessarily make them better and there that's the end of the debate uh, yeah. there we go <laughs> there's got to be something to, to say about the element of 
it being unique to this area. And oh, 100 percent. They sell that. it at the airport. Like it's that's not normal. <laughs> like yeah. it tells you all you need to know, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I always, though. And every time I'm going to visit family or something and I'm at the airport, I'm like, oh, I should just buy this, <laughs> which I should have bought it outside of the airport because mm-hmm. it's like double the price. But it's like you have to you have to bring people or or like you said, with the Christmas sale thing, if you're traveling for the holidays and driving, you bring a pack, a case of Christmas sale in your trunk. Yep. It's that's part. exactly what you do. But and I am glad we're talking about stadium mustard than Christmas ale because, like I said, warm weather is coming mm. then. <laughs> yes. For Great. sure. Thank heavens. Well, thank you so much for watching or listening to Dine Drink Clear the podcast. You can like, subscribe, and follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Dine Drink Clee and subscribe to our newsletter at cleveland.com slash newsletters. Thanks. <laughs>